Hello guys and welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around. This week I'm joined by the latest Nissan Leaf. There we are. Now apologies if this video seems quite hastily filmed. Um, you, can't, you can't really tell because it looks quite light but I, I am in fact running out of daylight. I've just literally started filming after I filmed the main review of this car which will be ready to watch in a few days. So yes, time is off the essence. So let's get cracking. So yes, here we are, the new Nissan Leaf, which is one of the most popular electric cars money can buy. Speaking of which, the car you're looking at is around £30,000 um, because I've got one or two optional extras. So the spring cloud green paintwork, yes, they really call it spring cloud green, that is £575. And I've also got the Pro Pilot system, which is £400. So, yes, this car is around £29,500, which may seem pricey for some of you watching, um, but don't forget electric cars are more money to buy. So, I think it looks so much better than its predecessor. It looks a lot like the latest Nissan Micra, which I quite like. It looks a lot sharper than the old Leaf, and it also looks more like a conventional family hatchback as well, whereas the previous Nissan Leaf, it looked a little bit alien, but not in a good way. Well, of course, looks will always be subjective. At the back, you've got these rear lights which strike down and then wrap around, which are very nice. Um, quite similar to the Nissan Duke, which I'm not a big fan of, but never mind. As standard, you get 17 inch alloys because I've got the mid range model, the N connector. And just in case you weren't aware that this car emits zero emissions, Nissan has even put it on the side. And as you probably saw a few moments ago, Nissan has also put it on the back. But apart from those badges, there aren't really any massive clues that this car is electric, not to look at anyway, because like I say, it does look like your bog standard family hatchback. Let me just turn off my GoPro, just realise, still got one of my GoPros filming from, uh, from earlier. There we go. So apologies if the car's a bit messy inside with uh, my filming stuff, but yes. This is really the only time I've got to film this video. Um, so this is the, the afternoon before the day I take it back. I didn't really explain that very well, but basically I'm taking this car back tomorrow morning. Um, so yes, this is my only window I've got, but thankfully um, the camera makes it look lighter than what it actually is because yes, it is getting quite dark. Right, so let me step inside. Get keyless entry as standard, but the car is already unlocked. The inside is quite a nice place to be. I really like the seats. So you've got fabric and synthetic leather. And I really like the blue stitching. I know it sounds really silly, but it's a really nice touch. Oh, you also get a leather steering wheel, like so. Right, I'm gonna leave that light on so you can see the inside better. So as standard, of course, you get um, front and rear electric windows. I've got adaptive cruise control and I've also got the Pro Pilot, but that is an optional extra. Got plenty of buttons on the steering wheel. In fact, I think really, like other Nissan cars, there are too many buttons in here. Now, my wife disagrees, but yeah, you've got loads there. Got plenty for the climate control, plenty on the steering wheel. More there. And you've got some there. So yes, there are a lot of buttons in here and quite a few hard plastic. So now I know some of you who watch my videos uh, wonder why I talk about hard plastics. Well, it's just a mark of quality. Um, a lot of, you know, some of you watching don't really care whether a car's got hard plastics. But I think for me, for a car that's nigh on 30 grand, it would be nice to have some more soft touch materials in here and that's kind of hard and scratchy. Although in the car's defense, it does feel durable. But yes, there are some cheap, there are some other cheap elements in here. So these seat, uh, these buttons for the heated seats, there we are. They just 
oh, they're just nasty and horrible, and they feel like they've come from the 90s. Also, the release for the electric parking brake, it just feels really cheap and nasty. The plastic has kind of got a little bit of a rough edge to it where the join isn't quite doesn't quite sit flush and yeah it feels like i've got it out of a christmas cracker yeah not very good at all i do like this this panel here though which you can't really see apologies guys so because it's getting quite dark in here the autofocus is is struggling as you in fact if i do that it's probably a little bit better you got a nice panel there let's get that light back on turn the car on and because it is electric it makes no noise at all. You've got, you've got this nice seven inch digital display, which okay, it's no Audi virtual cockpit, but it is quite nice to look at all the same. And you can scroll through the thingamabobs here, the displays. I know thingamabobs is a very technical term. There we are. Right. As standard, you also get a seven inch touchscreen, which works well enough, it's not the most it's not, you know, it's not the best touchscreen in the automotive world, but it certainly isn't the worst. Uh, so I've got navigation as standard. There we are. I've also got smartphone connectivity, although I've found that whenever I um, plug in my Galaxy S9, my, my Samsung, um, the Android Auto doesn't quite work properly. It works for about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes and it just crashes. Uh, that could be my phone, but it could also be the... Um, system as well you get the intelligent around view monitor which i simply love look at that so you get to see all the around the car you can change the camera so that's for so you can't really tell what it is there but that's basically the near side of the car so if you want to park an extra curb and you don't want to scuff your alloys that's very handy indeed and that's the uh, front camera so i'll do that there we are i don't really want to flash, flash my lights too much in a um in this sort of car park who knows what might happen um yes yeah, so that's a handy feature and of course you get dab radio and bluetooth you'd kind of expect that you also get climate control which um isn't is not bad and you may wonder why i'm kind of critiquing uh, critiquing the um climate control i find it takes quite some time to get going and when you activate it it does have a, an effect on range, but when you use the heated seats, so it's both heated seats on and heated steering wheel. I've got to mention this, this has a heated steering wheel. So I've got those on and the heated steering wheel. And that doesn't seem to have any kind of effect on my range, which I find um, interesting. You've also got an eco button if you want to um, squeeze even more out of the battery as possible. And the e-pedal. Now, I don't, want to, I don't want to talk too much about this um, because well, I haven't really got the time to do so. But basically, the, what the e-pedal is, is it is a feature whereby when, when, it, when, when it is activated, when you lift off the uh, accelerator, the car progressively brakes itself, uh, meaning you can effectively drive this car using only the accelerator. Obviously, if you need to do an emergency stop, you will need to go into... Uh, the brakes because you can't rely on the e-pedal alone um but yes it, it's really handy um, it, it kind of sounds a bit gimmicky but trust me it isn't it really is a handy feature because every time you lift off the car just brakes for you very very good it takes it does take a little bit of time to get used to but um yes i do quite like it this car also has regenerative braking as well to help give a little bit more power back into the battery let's talk about practicality the cubby holes are pretty good the door bins of a good size been able to fit in my um 750 milliliter bottle of water in there with no issue a bit of space left over I've got two cup holders in the middle little slot there where you can pop your smartphone this area here which has got an armrest which looks like a bike saddle that's been cut in half a bit of a odd look got a packet of crisps in there just to give you an idea of what you can fit in there and of course you've got a glove box which offers a decent amount of space there we are you've also got a usb port and an auxiliary port and a 12 volt socket with a very flimsy sort of cover hmm 
yes, not my cup of tea. Um, getting a good driving position is a little bit tricky because the steering wheel only adjusts for rake. So it goes up and down, but not towards me or away from me. So it does mean for my height, I'm six foot two, I have to have my driver's seat slid a little fur further forward um, so I don't have to stretch or strain to get to the steering wheel. So that is a little bit annoying. Right, let's go into the back. Let's turn the car off. Is it me or does that sound like an alarm clock? It's basically just moaning because I've left the uh, door open. Actually, where, where is the key? Let me make sure I take it with me. Yeah, really starting to get quite dark now. Right. You also get privacy glass as standard. Now, as always, the driver's seat has been set for me. Don't mind that, that's my camera slider. And rear space isn't really fantastic. Legroom, I must admit, is pretty good. So even when I'm sat behind a driver's seat set for me, as I mentioned a few moments ago, I'm six foot two, so that's pretty good. And from the side, not too bad. Knee room is okay. However, headroom could be better. Hopefully, I've got enough light for you to see. I've got enough headroom just, but anyone taller than me would struggle. Could you fit three adults back here? No, I don't think so. Um, it would be too much of a squeeze, particularly as in the middle, you do have this rather large transmission tunnel. So if you were sat in the uh, middle, you'd have to have your legs, you'd have to sit with your legs open. So yeah, not overly ideal. Right, let's clamber out and have a look at the boot, which is pretty decent. Now I do have a, one small complaint about the boot, more specifically the tailgate. So for my height, I, I, I sometimes bang my head on it because it's right at sort of head level. I did actually just bang my head on it. Ow, it did kind of hurt. Now I've got my clobber in here, so I always have, look at that, it's organized chaos. Um, so you can't really get a, a, a fantastic idea of what the boot space is, but I've got quite a lot of stuff in there with space left over. So the boot is, um, it has a capacity of 435 litres, which is more than the Volkswagen e-Golf, the Hyundai Kona Electric, and the Renault Zoe. Quite annoyingly though, there is quite a thick load lip. So yes, that is quite deep. That is a little bit annoying. But you get these netted areas, are quite handy for keeping your charging cables in place you've got one either side so that is a six meter three pin EVSE cable and that is a three meter mode three type two charging cable there we are um, supplied with the car if you do need more space you can of course fold down the 60 40 rear seats to give you 1176 liters worth of space which isn't quite as large as some of its rivals. There we are, close it, close the car down like so. Sorry, the boot's down like so. Well, normally at this point, I would uh, show you the, en the engine, but of course it hasn't got one. But I can show you the electric motor before it truly does get dark. However, I must say I'm quite impressed by the uh, low light performance on this camera. Because it isn't as light as what the camera would have you think. So let me talk you through the battery. This is the electric motor, of course, although I keep thinking it's the battery, but it isn't. Um, so it's it's got a capacity of uh, 40 kilowatt hours. And in regards to performance, it has 150 horsepower with 320 newton meters of torque, meaning it will hit 62 miles per hour in 7.9 seconds, which is pretty respectable for a car like this. This car weighs over 1,550 kilograms, and the top speed is just 89, but when you bear in mind the legal limit in the UK is 70, that's, that's actually more than enough. Now, in regards to range, on a combined run using the new WLTP method, the Nissan Leaf will give you 168 miles. However, if you drive it in and around town, Nissan states that will rise 
to 240 miles. So it is better than before. Now in regards to charging, I've actually got the uh, key so I can so press that button there. There we are. So you've got two ports here. You've got this one for your rapid charging. So to get it from zero to 80%, takes 40 minutes and this one does your slow and fast charging so on a fast charge to get it from zero to a hundred percent will take seven and a half hours uh, but if you use a slow charge so if you plug it into your standard traditional uh, three pin socket at home it will take over 20 hours so quite a long time close it down like so you have to make sure it's clicked in otherwise it does come up when you're driving which isn't a huge issue because it doesn't affect visibility but um yeah, you just have to make sure you have to click it into place. Forgot to mention it, but the power is fed to the front wheels, so it's not four-wheel drive or it's not rear-wheel drive. Like most family hatchbacks, quite the wind has really just picked up. Lord above. Like most family hatchbacks, the Nissan Leaf is front-wheel drive. Anyway, probably time for me to finish before it gets too dark and scary out here. Be like a scene from the uh, Blair Witch Project. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the car, uh, please feel free to comment. Uh, there will of course be a full review coming with this car. And I've also done like a vlog diary sort of um, series. Well I've, well, I've filmed it. I'm yet to actually edit it. Uh, so yeah, I thought it'd be good to make uh, a series of vlogs to explain what it has been like to live with an electric car. Anyway. I'm starting to waffle. Yep, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, give it a massive thumbs up. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click that bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. And if you aren't subscribed, guys, what are you waiting for? Be sure to subscribe for more car obsession.